Hi and welcome to What Circuit. I'm David, Charles doing the filming today. And uh, this video we're just going to have a quick run through uh, filters. We're going to talk about some of the very basics. And then we're going to build up very rapidly up to some quite complex, complex active filters. And that's ready for a few more videos coming up where we're going to look at uh, how to make uh, variable filters and uh, really get some very deep control for some properly engineered filters when we've got very tight specifications to meet. Firstly, what are some of the applications of analog filters? Uh, so these are used a lot in audio applications. Uh, that's one of the big uses I've come across them. Things like uh, mixing desk, graphic equalizer, if you used any of those, those have all got well, analog filters inside, at least on the uh, slightly older ones. Some modern ones have been replaced by digital implementations of filters. So uh, also things like uh, guitar effects pedals, though a lot of those are basically analog filters inside. Um, also, any anyway, we've got um, transducers that give out give out an analog voltage. Um, things like seismic applications, also you know, accelerometers, pressure sensors, gyro, um, you know, gyros. All of these, or a lot of these, have got uh, analog outputs on them, and you quite often want to filter those. And you might want to do some basic low pass filtering, or you might want to try and remove mains noise, crosstalk, that kind of thing. If you've got switch mode power supply systems, you might want to try and filter out some of the switching noise that comes from those. And also, I think even if you're going to digitize a signal, you're going to put it into an analog digital converter, you're probably going to want to try and avoid aliasing. So therefore, yeah, you're going to want to put a low pass filter on the input to that. You want to try and sort of uh, take out any frequencies that are higher than about, say, about half your uh, sampling rate. And so, yeah, all of these applications, analog filter is still really useful. Let's look at some of the tools we've got to design filters. So yeah, if you start off in electronic engineering, one of the things you're immediately familiar with is something like an oscilloscope, which is an inherently time domain. So we've got a, an x-axis of time, and we plot something on the y-axis, which is normally voltage. However, when we're doing filter design, that isn't normally the most useful way to look at it. It's better to instead look at things in the frequency domain. And there, we've got the Bode plot. So let's take you through some of the basics of the Bode plot. So just drawing a quick example up on the whiteboard here. So we've got, I've drawn volts because we're looking at analog filters up on the y-axis. But on the x-axis here we're varying frequency. So in this case I've done it as hertz but you might also see omega. Which is uh, just a different measurement of frequency and it's proportional to uh, frequency in hertz. So on the bow plot we've actually got two axes that we're going to plot. So we're first of all going to look at... So I've drawn this in volts, this is looking at a particular signal, but what you might also see is gain, and gain is going to be in decibels. So there's an excellent video on decibels which we're linking uh, down below, but we'll go into a bit, a bit more detail on that later. The second axis you're going to see is phase. So phase is going to be generally relative, so you're going to have a uh, signal in to your filter and a signal out, and the phase difference between the two is going to vary over frequency. So what we've drawn up here is a standard low pass filter. So as the frequency is low, we're going to get let lots of the signal through. So as you see, we've got quite a high amount of voltage coming out. However, as the frequency increases, the voltage out starts to drop. And because of the uh, filtering characteristics, what you'll generally see is the phase changing along with that. So the important thing to remember from this is that you're looking at variation over frequency. So what we can do with the bow plot is start to look at a few basic filter types and it's going to fall, fall into four standard types. So let's have a look at those now. So we have four basic filter types. So we have the low pass, which we looked at earlier. So we take any low frequency uh, signals, let them through, but we start to attenuate or make smaller any of the higher frequency signals. We have the exact opposite, which makes any... Uh, uh, low frequency signal smaller but lets through anything higher frequency. But let's say we then take a signal, pass it through a low pass filter, then a high pass filter, or the other way around. What we get then is a band pass filter. So we can get rid of low, low frequency signals and high frequency signals and just let some signals through in the middle. So these are quite useful in uh, lots of applications. Again, you'll see those in uh, graphic equalizers, audio, that kind of thing. What happens if we take the output from the two signals and uh, we effectively awe them so we can get rid of just a narrow band in the middle 
to end up with what's called a notch filter or a band stop filter. So these, are when you've got a particular sort of uh, frequency interfering, you really want to get rid of it. So commonly you'll see these, um, let's say you've got noise from mains and you want to get rid of that. Uh, if you're over in Europe or something like that, you'll put a sort of 50 hertz notch filter in. If you're in the States, you put a 60 hertz notch filter in. Also, fluorescent tubes, they're going to oscillate at twice the mains frequency. You might want to put some notch filters in if you've got some working with some very sensitive signals. So we've talked about some of the theoretical filters. Let's have a quick look at some basic but real filter circuits. So almost all filter circuits start off with something like a potential divider. So a potential divider circuit, you've got an input voltage, an output voltage. If you make the two resistor values the same, the output voltage is half the input voltage. As this resistor value uh, decreases, the output voltage decreases. As this increases, the output voltage increases. And uh, eventually, if you keep on increasing this to infinity, the output voltage is equal to the input voltage. If you decrease it to zero, the output voltage is zero. So, if we replace this resistor with a capacitor, the impedance or the AC resistance of a capacitor decreases with frequency, just inherently, part of the properties of a capacitor. So, at DC, this is effectively an open circuit, and the output voltage is equal to the input voltage. As the frequency uh, increases, the impedance of this decreases, and therefore the output voltage gets smaller. So what we've made is a very basic low-pass filter. So let's use this basic circuit just to have a quick look at uh, some of the options we've got to analyse these. So first of all, we're going to have a look at LT Spice, which is a free Spice program, and you can just see how we can do some AC sweeps to investigate fo uh, filter response. And then we're going to build some build this up on the bench, and we're going to use the analog discovery board just to uh, see what uh, tools we've got to just look at you know real world performance of filters. So let's use LT Spice to have a quick look at that circuit. So I'm going to create a new schematic. Let's just drop in uh, some components to match the one we've got uh, on the board. Then we'll just uh, put a voltage source in there to drive it. So that's going to be our input. Let's just uh, get that wired up. And let's give the output a name. Right, so I've put in a couple of values for the uh, components here. So uh, if we look up the uh, equation for this kind of filter, the cutoff frequency is 1 over 2 times pi times the resistor value times the capacitor value. So if we open this up here, with a, a resistor value of 1600 ohms and a, a 10 nanofarad capacitor, then that gives us a well, rough cutoff frequency of around 10 kilohertz, shall we say. So what we're going to do, let's actually just uh, tell the input to be an AC wave. So we're just going to give it an amplitude of 1. So that just means the scaling we get on the output uh, works nicely. Now run the simulation. So we're actually going to do an AC analysis. Um, personally, I'd just like to do this in uh, decades. Let's run that from 100 hertz to 1 meg. So as you can see here, this really is looking exactly like the uh, basic bow plot that we put up on the whiteboard. So uh, the, uh, amp the amplitude which we've got here as the uh, solid line really starts dropping off around this uh, 10 kilohertz mark. And you can see here it's dropped down by minus 3 dB. If dB. If you look down in the uh, bottom right hand there. And then it just carries on dropping away at uh, minus 20 dB per decade all the way down and the phase rolls off as well. So uh, how close does this actually compare to the actual built circuit? Well if we take the analog uh, discovery uh, instrument that we were looking at before under the more instruments section it's got something called the network analyzer which basically looks for all of this. So I've gone ahead and set up the network analyzer uh, hooked up the resistance capacitor so if we take a single run here, so we're looking at the uh, blue line as the way I've set this up. So now we start to see it drop off, 
So our calculated drop-off point was uh, 10 kilohertz. And you see here, minus 2.9 dB. Pretty darn close to 3 dB down. Rolls off nice and smoothly. And the phase rolls off there. So as we can see, we can build the circuit, we can simulate it, we can measure it. All the results match up fairly well, especially for a simple uh, filter like this. And uh, also we're going to... Uh, now we're up, uh, finishing this stage, we're going to go back, we're going to look at slightly more advanced filters. And in the uh, next video, we're actually going to build and measure some of the more advanced fil uh, filters and just uh, see how we can really use these tools to their full potential. So we looked at some basic filters, and we can just uh, tune the frequency at which these kick in just by varying the values of the resistor and capacitor using very straightforward formulas. But what happens if we want to do something a bit different? Let's say we want to change the, the uh, slope angle which is really the main other parameter you can change. So we've looked at the basic RC filter. What happens if we put multiple RC filters together? So if we do this right, the basic RC filter might have a fairly slow roll off like that, as we've seen. If we start putting more of these stages together, we can actually increase the slope. I've drawn this a bit steeply. You won't quite get it that steep, but you'll get it certainly rolling off a lot quicker than the simple one. However, well, it's not quite as easy as it looks because the subsequent stages actually start loading up the first stage. So you actually effectively, in parallel with this capacitor, you've got all the subsequent RC stages you've got after that. So it's, it's not actually easy to do this. When you start talking about you know, three or four stages or even two stages, you have to start thinking a bit more carefully. So we've analysed this. It's quite straightforward how it works. But let's move on to the next steps. Let's start looking at active filters. So these are filters where you actually have gain in them. And normally this gain is provided by an operational amplifier. So really, as soon as you start getting into engineering a filter, so you've really got a specific set of characteristics you want to achieve, then active filters really start to become the way to go. And yeah, you know, RC filters, or even just you know, LRC filters when you're also including inductors, they're useful in certain set applications, but when you really want to be able to tune and choose characteristics exactly, active is the way to go. So then you went into what kind of active filter do you want to use? So there are lots and lots of kinds of active filter out there, enough that I'm not even going to attempt to try and cover them all. Instead what I'm going to do is just focus on one particularly interesting type. So that's uh, called the, it's a three op amp implementation of the state variable filter. And I've just drawn one up on the board here. So obviously we've gone up in complexity enormously from where we were a few minutes ago. But if you're working with these sort of things, or even just any kind of active filters, what you really want is a book. So I've got a few examples here. You've got something like the Active Filter uh, Handbook. But two I use a lot. You've got uh, the Active Filter Cookbook by Don Lancaster. Very good book indeed. And uh, a little bit more general cover stuff apart from filters. It's the uh, IC Op Amp Cookbook by uh, Walter Young. Really good book. Slightly outdated, yeah, it still talks about sort of 741 op amps, but really still very much applicable. Um, we'll have uh, links to both these books in the uh, notes on YouTube. So, in terms of actually just using something like this to do a design, let's just take you through an example and show you, you know, let's take you through an example design and you'll start to see why this is a really good filter. So, to start, we've got the uh, schematic up on the board here, we've got all our L's and C's labelled. And initially you'll see we have a high pass output and a band pass output and a low pass output all from one filter. So we don't have to have three different kinds of filters, we can just tap off the right one initially. It's particularly if you're doing sort of uh, lab type instrumentation work, something like that, that's really handy. And then you'll also notice you've got these two capacitors here and these two resistors here, and those combination of those four can be tuned to set the frequency very simply. So you can actually just alter the value of these two resistors or alter the value of these two capacitors and you can tune your frequency and the nice thing about it is it won't affect any of the other characteristics so it won't affect things like your roll off and those are all fall out the calculations we're about to do. So we talked obviously about uh, changing the frequency you can also change what's called the Q of the filter, which is basically similar to uh, what's talked about the RC filters when we talk about multiple stages. 
So in there you had a uh, different number of stages, gives you a different number of poles, which changes how steep your roll-off is. On here you can set the Q, and again that sets how sharp your roll-off is. So let's try a quick design example. So first of all, we're going to choose a value for R1. At the moment we're just going to start off with an arbitrary value, but uh, you're probably going to want to go back and refine that as you start to pick, find out your uh, frequency. And we've got a couple of assumptions. We're going to say that C1 is equal to C2, and that R1 is equal to R4 is equal to R5. So that's already five values picked since we've done that. Oh, and uh, we'll pick a value of C a bit later. So our value of R2 is equal to the gain of our low pass output multiplied by R1. So assuming you just want the gain of 1, that's really easy. R3 is equal to the gain of our high pass output multiplied by R1. So this is the one that's a bit more complicated. Our cutoff frequency is equal to the square root of R3 divided by R2 times R4 times R5 times C1 times by C2. All of that divided by 2 times pi. So with this, you can just sort of uh, you can change your value of C1 and therefore C2 until you get the right cutoff frequency. At this point, if your value of capacitance is really small, so if you come up with a value of say four or five picofarads, or really really large, you have know, to come up with a value of sort of several hundred microfarads, then you can go back to the beginning and change your value of R in the right direction, so it, you know brings it into sensible component values. Once you've got your cutoff frequency, your R6 is equal to R1 times by three times the quality factor or Q minus one. So, choosing your value of Q, I won't go into this in detail, but generally if you're just doing a basic filter, there's something called the Butterworth roll-off, which is very nice. So it gives you a smooth uh, response in your passband, and then it just rolls off gently. So it's not the most aggressive filter, but it gives you very good amplitude characteristics. It doesn't distort your signal. And for that, if you just choose your value to be uh, value of Q to be 1 over root 2, or around 0.707, and after that, your value of R7 just falls out, which is just 1 over C1 times 2 pi FC. So designing a complex filter like this actually is quite straightforward, just following some basic steps. And again, we've got an Excel sheet to demonstrate this, and that will be included uh, in our website, What Circuit. Again, that's linked to uh, linked from the YouTube video. So, you know, having gone from a really basic RC circuit with just a really simple equation, we can take it all the way up to something like this where you can have complete control over all the parameters. And design actually isn't that, that complicated at all. So in this video we've looked at, you know, first of all, quick introduction to filters. We've looked at uh, some of the uh, techniques we've got for analysing them, including, you know, spice simulation, including using actual bits of test equipment. Uh, in the next video we're going to have, um, just take us a bit further forward, so we're going to carry on looking at the state variable filter. We're going to really focus on making the state variable filter, filter variable and uh, we're going to be able to get a lot of control over it. And uh, there's lots of different techniques for doing that. We're going to focus on a few, a few at a time and uh, have a look at some of the advantages, disadvantages of different techniques. So yeah, some really interesting stuff coming up. Stay tuned.